You're familiar with the biblical Joseph, but did you know that Joseph has a parallel life in the Quran and Islamic tradition? The story begins with Joseph as a young shepherd, hated by his brothers, and ends all the way in Egypt with his rise to power and eventual reunion with his father, Jacob. Now the story in the Torah and the Quran are quite similar, but with some interesting differences, particularly around the character of Potiphar's wife. Now you remember that scene between Joseph and Potiphar's wife where she tried to seduce him and he ran away and his garment got ripped? In the Quran, the scene ends differently with someone demonstrating that Joseph was in fact innocent. The next day, there's another scene. The women of the town start gossiping about Potiphar's wife, who's called Elaziz's wife in the Quran. They're laughing at her because she's fallen in love with a Canaanite slave. Elaziz's wife decides to teach them a lesson in humility, invites them for a tea party. She hands out citrus fruits and a paring knife, and then invites Joseph to serve refreshments. When he walks in, he's so beautiful that the women almost faint and end up cutting their hands instead of the fruit. Joseph decides that this environment is too dangerous and puts himself in jail to be a safe haven. Later on, after all the dreams, in the Torah, Pharaoh calls Joseph finally out of jail. He comes. In the Quran, he refuses to come because he wants everyone to clean up his reputation. Pharaoh calls the women of the town. What did you do to Joseph? The women say, not us. It was Elaziz's wife. He summons Elaziz's wife. And that's when we get a full confession. She admits that she tried to seduce him, but that he stayed pure. What's going on in the story? In the Torah, the relationship between Potiphar's wife and Joseph just moves the plot along. But the Quran uses the character of Elaziz's wife in order to develop an important Quranic value of repentance. Now, this whole story is so interesting and fertile that it gets picked up by later Jewish midrashim and Jewish popular stories about Joseph. It also becomes the raw material for Persian mystical poets who turn Zulecha, now named, into the hero of the story. And her yearnings for Joseph become a metaphor for the mystics yearning for God. In this tale, Zulecha becomes the hero. At the end of her life, after this transformation, she meets Joseph on the road. He's so impressed by her transformation that he offers to grant her a wish. She wishes to be reborn as a young bride, and in fact, they become married. But since Joseph is but a metaphor for the divine, it's a momentary union, and then he dissipates into the other realm.